morning, everyone. Welcome back to The Lookout. It's Sunday, the 26th of September, and uh, we're going to talk today about a place that's near and dear to many hearts. Uh, this is a place I started going to when I was a little kid, um, maybe seven years old, and it's Juniper Lake in Lassen Park. So over the past couple of weeks, um, we've been hearing so much about the devastation of the Dixie Fire. Um, kind of the unprecedented scale of the fire and the destructiveness and you know it's taken out some of our towns generally been a huge disaster um, one thing a lot of people have been asking me is how about juniper lake what happened um, i saw a national geographic article that said that the park was destroyed so um, i got a chance to go up there um, last wednesday with a um, we went up with the Lassen Park Fire Management Officer, Mike Klimek, and um, Lassen Park Public Affairs Officer and Interpretive Ranger, Kevin Sweeney, along with Dave Schloem from the Blue Dot Report, and Matt Fiddler, who's the audio producer. We went up through Chester. Um, we drove in on the road. And as you can see, the, the amount of devastation um, north of Chester is just immense it's unimaginable and we drove for miles without seeing a green pine needle and even though i've been looking at juniper lake and seeing on the imagery the satellite imagery that there's there's green trees around the lake and um you know from from outer space my uh my hope has been that the lake would be in good shape uh, driving through this endless sea of black sticks it was really disheartening and we got up and we opened the gate at the park boundary and drove up to the ranger station. And as we crested the hill to come into Juniper Lake, it was, it was somewhat miraculous. The lake is kind of sheltered from the, the big winds that blew the fire to spread over 120,000 acres in a matter of two days. And in the campground, you couldn't even tell that the fire had burned there uh, looking at the east side of the lake all the big trees appeared to be green and intact and on the far side of the lake there's patches of hot burn and then there was other patches just of green forest so in this sea of destruction and in this endless long drive of black trees juniper lake came through Yeah, well, I think like a lot of a lot of folks who will first, you know, come here, we, we see um, uh, the the fire perimeter map and everything's pink, right, with the red line around it or a black line around it, and it doesn't tell the story. And so when you actually get your eyes on it, you see a lot of this mosaic pattern, um, especially in this area, where um, that's all pink on the map, but also what's pink on the map are you know areas that burned really high intensely. And so when, when folks are coming back to their park and they're seeing that, yeah, there's, there's impacts, um, but I think a lot of folks will kind of be, um, there, there's some relief in coming to some of your favorite places. And yeah, it looks a bit different, but it doesn't look totally different. It's good to see our park be okay. And I think that, you know, as we go through the park and kind of see some of these areas, like I was saying, it's, um, it's good to know that that solace that you need to find in your park is, is still going to be found. Yeah. Um, there's... There's some black trees, but um, you know we still have our park. I wouldn't call this destroyed, no, or torched or scorched. I'd say that there was a fire here. Yeah. Um, and and but that might not be the headline that gets clicked on. <laughs> well, but that's that's the story people need to know because people get enough bad news and you know, depressing stories. It's you know it's nice once in a while to hear. There's some good news in, even in the worst fires. A lot of treatment, defensible space treatment, has occurred here around the ranger station since 2015. So a combination of uh, Park Service, Forest Service, Sierra Institute, uh, crews utilizing chainsaws and crosscut saws have, have fallen trees, um, taken some of the thinner ladder fuels away from the structure and out from underneath some of our larger timber and done 
pile burning in this area. So we've also extended that treatment as an area thinning, uh, manual treatment with hand thinning and pile burning throughout the Juniper Lake campground, which you saw had various fire effects, not all damaged by high severity fire. Leaving Juniper Lake, we headed back down to Chester and up to Drake's Bad. We drove through miles and miles of high severity burn with no living trees to be seen. Even after working in fire and fuels in this area for 25 years, I was shocked. It's hard to describe the extent of this devastation. Why did this area burn so hot? I asked Mike Klemek, who's Lassen Park's fire chief. Does this surprise you, any of this stuff that you're seeing here? With the, you know, the severities we got in these areas that have had a lot of thinning? Not with where the fire came from and the, the southwest wind it had on it and the, uh, and just the, seems like the stress in the vegetation since the beginning of the drought in 2012 and the, the increased mortality, the density of the, the stands, like we've always known that the, the, the wrong conditions or all the conditions being in alignment that fire was gonna come up canyon with high intensity. And I, I think all that alignment came into play on the fifth and sixth. Firing operations on Humboldt Road were unsuccessful in the days leading up to the fifth. And three different spot fires merged to create a massive run that ran west of Chester to the north. By the evening of the fifth, the fire had reached Fleischmann Lake and burned through the night of the morning of the 6th. However, once this big push was done, the fire moved with more of a flanking spread and lower flame intensities down into Warner Valley and down into Juniper Lake. Nevertheless, this run on the 5th and 6th burned over 100,000 acres. Portions of the fire that burned with a head fire burned with extremely high severity. The red areas on this map have almost 100% mortality of the larger trees. Green areas show uh, places where the fire stayed on the ground and didn't kill many of the larger trees. Areas that we saw earlier of the completely blackened trees on the lower Warner Valley Road were places where the fire's head directly impacted the area. As we move farther up Warner Valley, the fire, as we said, was backing down into the valley, moving downhill and not with the direct wind on it. So this resulted in lower fire severities and many of the larger trees here survived along with many of the cabins. One of the big success stories here was that firefighters were able to save the buildings at the resort in Drake's Bad. Uh, Park Service got in here with a few modules and did some extra uh, cleanup of dead and down material adjacent to the Drake's Bad Lodge. So there was treatments occurring weeks prior to the fire run to add some extra protection to the lodge itself or to the dining hall, the upper slope of the dining hall here. So that route work definitely benefited uh, this area contributed towards the success of this not burning. And then uh, the Park Service worked closely with the Almanor District uh, Fire Resources to come in here, um, you know, shortly after the 6th or 7th to install different um, pumps, sprinkler systems, and water tanks to uh, spray down uh, the, bu the buildings. So though a large portion of Lassen Park has burned in the Dixie Fire, it's not all destroyed. The park has had many fires in the past. It'll have many fires in the future. And many of the fire effects that we experience this time are actually good for the park. I'd like to thank Mike Klemek and Kevin Sweeney for taking us out, and also Dave Schloem and Matt Fiddler for putting the whole trip together. <laughs>